They took up stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, so now we begin to enter into the most solemn and somber time of the liturgical calendar. The period of penance given to us thus far has prepared us for the passion. So Christ hiding today initiates us into this reality. Okay. And we see this tangibly by the covering of the statues and the covering of the holy images. Okay. So in that covering, it is a sign of sorrow. The church goes into mourning for her Savior, who is in a short time to suffer, to undergo what he has thirsted for, for 33 years, his passion. He's longed to shed his blood for us. And whereas the first half of Lent, first two thirds, was meant to share with Christ in his fasting, not that we don't fast now, of course we up the ante a little bit, but then was more so to be in union with Christ in the desert, now it's to go with him to the cross, okay? Christ obtained for us the grace to do penance, do good penance uh, that would please God in the, the, uh, his temptation or in the wilderness. But now he gives us an opportunity to share with him in the real purpose for his coming. For ourselves, for our loved ones, for acquaintances, co-workers, for people of the world, for the nations, we enter into our Lord's suffering, we follow him in his footsteps in order to share with him in his redemption. So covering of the statues is a reminder Christ himself had to go into hiding in order to suffer for us the way that was meant for him to suffer. Christ was not afraid of these men. He could have been stoned right there and died for us, but that would not have fulfilled the scripture. Scriptures were fulfilled specifically in the crucifixion. We see types of that in the Old Testament, right? The striking of the bronze serpent, other images, right? So Christ today is also said by Dom Garanger that Whereas Adam and Eve hid themselves out of shame after they had committed sin, Christ hid himself to remove our shame. He, he hid himself so that he could die for us in the way that his father wanted, had eternally decreed. And by us going with him, our own shame is removed because we're we're able when we die with him, we die to ourselves, go through maybe a dry martyrdom, whether it be through the sacrifices we take upon ourselves or that which is given to us to suffer, like from the introit today, which is the Psalm 42, which you normally do at the foot of the altar, right? But judge me, O Lord, defend my cause against a nation that is not holy. The one who can say that is the one who has suffered for their sins. So for Christ's sake, he did not suffer for him. He did not suffer for his own sins, but for our sins. So he could say that. He's the only one, along with our lady, who could say that perfectly, right? Judge me because I am sinless, right? Judge me against those who are sinners. But the more that we suffer with Christ, the more that we are united with him and his intentions and his resolutions, right? The more we do that, then we also are able to become more and more sinless, even if we still have sins that we continue to weep over. 
and we're able to say to God, judge me against those who are unjust and unholy. And we can, we can possibly obtain even their conversion. And if we don't, then there are others, just like with our Lord, when he suffered and when he died, how many souls were saved, right? How many souls could go to heaven now because of his suffering? Well, to a much lesser extent, but also sharing in that passion, there are those that, even if the ones that we are asked to be judged against, right? Even if they are not converted, God will make use of that grace for somebody else. And it is also true from a sermon from one of the last two weeks, I forget now, if we do not persevere, God will simply find somebody else to do it. So remember when I was in the seminary, the priest said that. He said, God has given you a great gift here to be in the seminary, maybe to, to become a priest, God willing. But if you choose not to, whatever happens to you as a result, God will simply find somebody else to do it. So do not take yourself too seriously, in other words. So, uh, but God takes us seriously. He takes what we do, the choices that we make very seriously. And he has made us specifically in order that we might love him, know him, love him, serve him in this life, be happy with him in the next, right? From the Walter Moore Catechism. So, and part of that is that in order to be happy with God in the next, you must share with his sufferings in this life. And to this point of Lent, it has been more so for our own sins that we have suffered. But now we're trying more and more to get to the point where we're suffering for others. And sometimes because of others. So that now if somebody does something against us, it's not as much. I mean, of course, it's always deserved in a way, right? It's always deserved because of the sins that could have sent us to hell already. But less we say that now, and more we say that we're being conformed to the image of Christ crucified so that we can actually make reparation for others. And then also, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Right? It's from the scripture passage for, for the very beginning of Passion Tide. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Well, through the first part of Lent, we work to getting to the point where we can hear his voice. We have to remove the distractions, remove the weight, the burden of the flesh, which is what the fasting is for, right? So through all of that, we get to the point now where the church is saying, now you can hear his voice. And when you hear that voice, harden not your hearts. But the rich man, remember from the, the scripture, we said this recently, he did love our Lord and our Lord loved him. But when Christ gave to him what he needed to do, he walked away sad. He went away sad, which is just a tragic story. But that could be us during this time. All the preparation will mean nothing unless we obey the voice of God now. And that can come at any time where all of a sudden you get a little bit of inspiration, what to do, what to avoid, to go with Christ, to hide and pray with him rather than spending time doing the things maybe even, even through Lent you've still been doing, right? Or maybe some, some other things that we've been corrected for in the past by priest or parent or sibling and now it becomes more clear to us from the voice of Christ self of what we need to do. And we accept that authority at least finally. <laughs> so uh, it could be something that maybe the way some kind of bad habit of ours that we haven't re recognized as a bad habit, maybe, again, maybe in terms of the way we dress, maybe in terms of, uh, it could be really any, anything where we, now we see ourselves more as our brother's keeper and our love for them, we do more. And we preach even without saying a word. 
and we become more like our Lord that way. And if we're more united to him, then his voice does speak within us. We hear that, and then we have a choice whether or not to listen or to go back to our old ways. And Dom Gerger, one of the things he was complaining about in the first part of Passion Tide is how many will have to this point done the penances and be welcomed back by the church only when they hear the voice of God to reject it and go their own way. So the preparation is important, but it means nothing unless we actually follow through. And that following through, we do not know what it will be. We do not know necessarily what God will require of us. But do not harden thy heart. Right? Listen, and the word will be clear. And then we will have a chance to, to obey. Okay, to do what, what we need to do in order to be able on Good Friday to go to the cross and to kiss his feet. Incidentally, that there we should, when we get to Holy Week and we get to Good Friday, that whole ceremony is, is representative of actually of Calvary, Christ going to the cross and then and dying on the cross. Uh, just think of yourself when you're there and you're, you're kneeling before the cross, being with Our Lady, with St. John, with Mary Magdalene. And that is the church's way of giving you that opportunity to be there, even though we cannot go back in time. And we'll say more about that when we get closer, but uh, there's a lot of that. The Triduum, if please, if you can make it, do not miss a ceremony for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, or Holy Saturday. That is, that's why we're here, <laughs> okay? That's why it's so important we do it the old way, the pre-55 way, uh, to do it the way the church, really, uh, the mind of the church and what God has given to us. So, well, again, we'll say more about that when we get maybe uh, next week. We'll get to actually uh, Palm Sunday. There's no sermon next Sunday, but some announcements before him. Okay. Uh, and then also just with the Utica Medeos, judge me, O Lord, know my cause, right? Remember that we can only invoke our Lord truly if we are holy. If we're not holy, we need to evoke him to become holy. But if we try to intercede for others when we are in sin, that becomes very offensive to God. Okay, priest offers mass immortal sin is abomination, right? It is like, it's like a devil offering mass, <laughs> offering a holy sacrifice. Uh, so by extension, when you're at mass, you're interceding, be holy. If you're not, go to confession then. Get to a point where you, you can be holy and you can intercede. And in that, you, you'll thirst for more. Because it really is our purpose. Our purpose is to be, like for a priest is to be another Christ, but in a way also by extension, the faithful to be disciples and to, to be one with him in all things. It is why we are here. Okay. So let us then, this Passion Tide, try as much as we can to see more with the eyes of the soul now that with the eyes of the body, we do not see as much. We, with the coverings of the statues and the images, uh, let it be an invitation for us now to move away, to hide from the world in order that we may pray with Christ and be able to see to move maybe at least into the illuminative way, the purgation of Lent, moving into a time of the spiritual life when God will enlighten us with a greater understanding of the holy truths of our religion. Okay. In doing so, may we acquire a greater perception of the dignity of the God-man, maybe especially in the image of the holy face, that in turn we may help others to understand what it is like to be made in the image and likeness of Almighty God and to walk in his footsteps. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.